Hello, and welcome to Standard 12, where we get to talk about gambling. Um, this is a really unique standard to the state of Oklahoma, so I'm very excited that we have Dr. Sulin Sasser to visit with us about how the standard fits into Oklahoma and fits into our personal finance standards, and also walk us through the materials provided by the State Department of Education. So, Dr. Sasser, would you like to take it away with visiting with us about teaching gambling and personal finance? education. Sure, and I think we're probably the only state, as far as I know, that has gambling in, the, in their state standards. And part of that is because we're one of the largest per capita for casinos and uh, machines, any, any type of gambling machines uh, in the U.S. In fact, I think we even rank um, in the top five in the world for per capita uh, machines. So, you know, we, we always want to be number one in something. So I guess, you know, we, we, we've succeeded in that regard. And the, the last number I saw is that we have 110 casinos uh, in Oklahoma. And so that really has made gambling uh, at the forefront uh, of talking about a lot of issues. Also at the point in time that, uh, that the standards were being developed, Gambling was in the top five reasons that people file bankruptcy in Oklahoma. And so again, uh, you know, that, that made it something that was important for our students to understand. Uh, and I think it's one of the hardest standards to teach and perhaps even one of the most misunderstood standards to teach. So, um, so hopefully we can clear up some of that misconception uh, with today's uh, uh, visit about what and how and um, how to help our students uh, better understand the, this whole concept of gambling. So we ready to just kind of dive into the, uh, uh, to the overall philosophy of the, the lessons. I think uh, that sounds great. Yes. You know, and, and I think this is a great reminder that our standards in Oklahoma don't focus on uh, what thou shalt and shall not do. I mean, our standards uh, certainly are not, don't do this and, and you know, only do that. Our standards are developed to teach students how to reason, how to think through problems, uh, and how to make the best decisions for themselves. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm just really proud that, that we put such an emphasis on thinking uh, and such an emphasis on trying to de determine how to make good choices rather than trying to tell students, here's what you have to do and here's what you shouldn't do and, and having just a long set of rules for students to follow. So uh, again, we, it's not do and don't, it's um, trying to teach students a little bit about what are the cost and benefits, and which I think we stay, say right in those state standards, the cost and benefits of uh, issues related to gambling. Uh, so, the lessons themselves uh, really focus on that. And the first lesson, but this is a standard that when we revised these a few years ago, we went back and broke uh, the lesson in half. Uh, and the first one kind of focuses on gambling and, and a little bit more of how gambling works. And the second one focuses a lot on the benefits to the state uh, and the gambling industry. Uh, in Oklahoma. Uh, and I guess, you know, it's a, a good point to mention too that, you know, we've got a lot of people <laughs> that are that are involved in uh, working in that industry. Uh, and while we say, you know, as an economist, we say, well, you know, they could be working in another industry uh, if it wasn't for that. The reality is there's thousands of people that are working in casinos and you, you probably have their kids in class. Uh, there's there's thousands of people that work in the horse industry, uh, and the horse industry in Oklahoma is primarily focused on horse racing. It's not you know just focused on you know leisurely um, raising raising horses for for leisurely trail rides. Uh, you know it's it's focused primarily on the horse racing industry. And so when you start putting all that together, you're looking at a pretty significant contribution uh, to the overall state economy but also a pretty significant contribution to incomes for families. And so I think we just have to be very sensitive uh, to, that, to that concept that, you know, 
We've got moms and dads and aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas and everybody else in the family um, that, that are working uh, in that industry. And, you know, to, to come into class and say, oh, don't gamble uh, is, you know, is a little bit of a misnomer. And I, and I kind of chuckle because, you know, some of the people that I've heard say, you know, thou shalt not gamble, they're still participating in the office pool for when uh, Debbie's baby is going to be born, you know, which, which is still a form of gambling. Uh, and so, you know, I think we just have to be realistic that it's, that is part of life. And so how do we deal with it? Uh, another kind of interesting side note before we get started into the lessons, when we first introduced the, the um, uh, standards uh, and the lessons, you know, what, close to 15 years ago, we did a pretest with people that were going to be involved in implementing uh, the standards and the gambling, the question related to gambling and the, and the question related to charitable contributions were the most missed. And partly because we talked about the need to budget uh, for both of those and people don't see that you budget for gambling, just like you would budget for entertainment. Uh, and also that you would budget for um, charitable contributions, just like you would for any other spending. So just kind of, you know, a little bit of that as a background as well. And I think we've come a long way uh, in helping people understand that gambling is simply a form of entertainment. Yes, it can be addictive, but so can a lot of other things. Uh, and so, you know, with, again, we just have to be cautious uh, in telling somebody thou shalt not, because that's, that's not the way that our standards are set up. Okay, so uh, if we wanna look at that first lesson, um, that first lesson focuses a little bit more on um, how gambling works, uh, the whole concept behind uh, predictability, probability. You know, we, we try to take a little bit of a mathematical approach to it uh, and, and helping uh, teachers as well as students understand uh, what is behind the whole, the whole idea uh, recognizing that gambling is something that's very random. Uh, now, when, when you get into looking at slot machines and whatever, you got to keep in mind those casinos are not there just to hand out money to people. Uh, they're, they're there to make money just like any other business. And so the odds are always going to be in the favor of, of the owner of, of the business. Uh, same way, if you're looking at Powerball, or any of those other types of uh, games that people play, uh, those, again, those odds are always going to be in, in favor of the state or whoever uh, is managing that program because they've got to make a profit in order to be able to have payouts and so forth and so on. So we do take a little bit of a mathematical approach just to teach students and, again, help teachers remind students that that it is random and it's based on probability. Yeah, I mean, there's a potential that you're going, that you could win. Otherwise, nobody would play. But but the probability of you winning is relatively small. And how much money do you have to spend before you actually win? And that you know that's the the question that no one can answer. We used to talk about the sixty four thousand dollar question, and it's probably with inflation is a lot higher than that these days. But still, uh, it's a form of entertainment because a lot of people are intrigued by dealing with those odds, uh, whether it's the odds of again going and betting on a horse uh, at Remington Park or you know, going and, and betting on the odds at blackjack or any or you know pulling those bars on the you know that handle on uh, on those slot machines. People just seem to to kind of take some pleasure in that. The secret is knowing when to walk away. Uh, and that's why if you budget, you spend the amount that you've budgeted for, then you then you walk away. And and it's no different from any other form of entertainment. So like all the other lessons that we have, we start off uh, in looking at um, the vocabulary behind the, the lesson. Then we move into uh, the introduction of the lesson. And then we start applying both of those uh, in, in the lesson itself. And you can see uh, as we go through this lesson, we, we try to explain the idea that you know it's a game of chance, keeping in mind that it's a game. 
Uh, and again, games are forms of entertainment, whether they're played at home, whether they're played in the casino, they're a form of entertainment. Uh, you just, when you go to the casino, it costs money. Uh, and so um, that takes money and it takes luck uh, because, you know, everything is, is based on, on really on those two, those two principles. Uh, there's never a guarantee when it's something is based on luck. Uh, and, you know, that's again, what we try to emphasize in this lesson. Uh, as, as we move on through looking at um, the odds, that's where we get into looking at how slot machines are set up. We look at the odds behind the Powerball and pick three. And those are all available on websites, you know, where you can go in and you can actually see. And what we pulled from that is, is rather minimum uh, or minimal compared to a lot of the other information that is on those websites. So, you know, if a teacher really wants to delve into that, especially get into the math side of it, uh, there's a lot more information that is out there uh, on the Powerball website and, and other similar websites. Um, so Amy, if we just kind of keep on scrolling through, again, you see the information pulled directly uh, from that website. Uh, and then it goes on into looking at the odds of winning. Uh, and again, you can still have fun even if you don't win, but it's always more fun when you do win. <laughs> and, and it's hard to tell which is more addictive. Is it more addictive if you don't win and so you wanna keep putting money in? Or is it more addictive if you win and so you want to keep winning? Uh, you know, and that that all comes back to you know a person's uh, kind of a person's psyche and, and how it influences that. But at the same time, if you budget the amount you're going to spend, that's when you know to walk away, regardless of whether you're winning or losing. You walk away uh, at that point. So uh, here we get on into looking at the concept of independent versus uh, dependent variables and, and events, and we, we attempt to explain that, uh, and how dealing of cards uh, relies on independent versus dependent events. Then we move on in again in that lesson looking at probability versus predictability. Uh, and, you know, if we could, if we were better at predicting how we were going to do, that would be great. But, <laughs> uh, but, you know, look at weather forecasters, as we allude to there, they have all of this available to them, all of these models available to them, and they still, you know, don't get it right all the time either. So, uh, you know, just trying to rely on our own to predict when we're going to win uh, is, you know, probably a false premise and, and not, not a very good tactic. So the best tactic, again, is set that budget play until you have spent that budget and then walk away. All, all I'm trying to get people to understand is gambling is no different really than anything else that a person does because people that have an addictive personality can get addicted to basically anything that is out there. So if we try to give them the facts uh, and try to lay the basic foundation, then students can make that decision for themselves. Uh, and so that pretty much uh, winds up this particular lesson uh, in, again, is looking at kind of the, the basic foundations of how games are set up. Uh, and uh, there's the gambling act or the, the flip activity to try to determine uh, whether a coin will land on heads or tails. Uh, and again, that's just to emphasize uh, the whole uh, idea of independence rather than dependency. Uh, so that pretty much takes care of that first lesson. The second lesson gets a little bit more into uh, the, the idea that we do have problems with, with gambling or there are potential problems. It's still a relatively small percent of the population that, uh, that gets involved uh, with addictive gambling. Um, and again, I'm, I'll just say a person that has an addictive personality, they're, they're going to find a form of addiction in one way or another. Uh, and so here we get into um, looking at social cost and benefits of gambling. Again, keep in mind there's cost to society 
just like there's cost for individuals, but there's also benefits to society, just like there can be benefits um, to individuals. And in this, this lesson, the second one, we try to give a little bit of history and understanding about gambling and the gambling industry uh, throughout the United States. And, and you know, we all think of Nevada uh, and Las Vegas when we think of gambling, we don't think of Oklahoma City and Tulsa being the hotbeds but you know, keep in mind the, the casino down at Thackerville, I think is still the largest casino in the world the last time uh, I checked um, on those statistics. It was still the largest casino in the world, largest in the number of slot machines and, and, and tables available. So you know, again, you know, we, we think that this all takes place somewhere else, uh, but it actually takes place in our own backyard. The other issue that we start trying to address in, in this um, um, uh, lesson, uh, certainly we get into the, the Indian Gaming Act, which is how um, we got casino gambling and, uh, and really as far as that goes, how we got horse racing uh, in Oklahoma as well. But uh, what, one of the things that we attempt to address in this lesson gets into more gray areas and that's the online gambling. Uh, and it's still very difficult to determine what is legal and what is illegal uh, whenever it gets down to online gambling. Uh, and again, that is, that is that secret gambling that people do that many, that oftentimes no one ever sees. Um, notice, I think that as we scroll by there, we talk about casinos employ, what, 75,000 people in Oklahoma? Was that right? Yeah, 75,000 people in Oklahoma. So the odds of, here we go talking about the odds, the odds of you having someone in class that is impacted by that industry is very high. Um, and, you know, so that's all the more reason, um, you know, to teach again the cost and benefits. But when we get down to looking at uh, some of these hidden features, and again, I'll go back to the to the idea of online gambling. You know, those are numbers we don't know, uh, and we don't know how much of that is offshore, how much of that is um, even illegal, um, a, a legal or legit company, and how much of it is a scam. So those those are those are oh, that's to me that that's one of those red flags uh, that we can raise with students is just to be aware. Uh, if you go online to gamble, you know, it, I guess it's kind of safer to say go to the local casino rather than uh, if you're going to gamble, go to the local casino rather than go online because you have the potential for credit card numbers to be stolen and everything else uh, when you start going online. It, it, that's extremely high risk. Um, we have worked some with um, uh, people in Oklahoma that uh, are very knowledgeable about personal issues with gambling. Uh, and so this lesson again moves in uh, to look at some of that and we can scroll on down uh, in that next page, Amy, where we start looking at um, personal issues with gambling. It's interesting because people oftentimes think, you know, it's senior citizens or it's, you know, the, the middle class or it's only the poor or only this. Uh, that get involved in problem gambling. And the fastest growing group of people uh, that are addicts are college students. Uh, and so, you know, again, teaching kids at, at the high school level uh, is just such a good way to prepare them for the challenges that they're gonna be facing uh, as they get out and rely more on their peers rather than on their families. We do put uh, some factors in here for people uh, to look at um, if they notice problems with their friends as well as where to go for help. Uh, and one, one thing I think we've talked about perhaps in other videos, but just as a reminder is that today's young people are not developing full reasoning skills until they're in their mid to late twenties. Uh, and so, uh, you know, they're, they're not always making good choices with their money. Uh, and so the more that we can do to try to help them make those good choices and reason through 
we're practicing that part of the brain that will help them start making better decisions and better choices earlier in life. Uh, and so I just really, really, really encourage teachers to take that approach in looking at gambling, just like they do with any other standard. Um, other gambling issues, again, we, we, that's where we get a little bit more into uh, looking at sports gambling and, and some of those issues. And a lot of that is still very gray because Supreme Court rulings, uh, no one really knows how some of that is going to um, uh, be implemented. Uh, you know, there's been talk that you can be sitting in the stadium and start gambling on the game, uh, you know, using your phone. So, you know, there's just still a lot of questions whenever it comes down to the full extent of gambling. And, and so it's just so critical that, that students understand, um, you know, the impact that it can have on them. Uh, sports gambling is, is incredibly um, popular with teens, but especially with males. Um, and, but we're seeing that, you know, again, with, with males of all ages, it's not just teens, but that's oftentimes where they get started. And a lot of times they get started because that's what dad is doing, or that's what, you know, somebody else is doing. Uh, and they're attending those events with, uh, uh, you know, with family members and the family members are doing that. They think it's okay for them to do it too. Um, so that's almost another reason though, not to say thou shalt not, because, Hey, if that's what my dad does, then, then, you know, I have to be, we have to approach it just a little more carefully. And maybe the, the idea is if we teach those costs and benefits that kid will go home and talk to their dad or their uncle or whoever, uh, about those costs and benefits as well. Uh, and so we do have some, some tips. Uh, and I think, you know, the, the greatest tip there is, set a dollar limit and stick to it, uh, you know, and it's the same if you're going to buy a car, if you're, you know, going to buy a new outfit, you know, setting limits on your own behavior is, is the best tool there is for managing your money. Uh, and so it's, you know, it's true for gambling, just like it is for anything else. Uh, and so, you know, again, this lesson concludes with the idea that it, you know, it's, it's an integrated part of Oklahoma's culture, but it's an integrated part uh, of the world's culture. Uh, it's not, we're not unique in, in that regard. Uh, and, you know, you are risking your money uh, anytime that you take place in, uh, in, take a part in any gambling activity, but hey, that's why they call it gambling. You know, if you weren't taking a risk, then, then it wouldn't be gambling. It'd be called something else. Um, but if you can't afford to lose it, don't do it. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's I guess, for a, a, a closing comment, that's, that's probably the, the best thing that, that I could say. Uh, and, you know, something that you could remind students, if you can't afford to lose it, just don't do it. And that's true, whether you're giving money to your friends or, or whatever else. Uh, and again, we go back and, and we try to uh, have students come back and, you know, regurgitate some of the information um, uh, that we've presented uh, in the lesson uh, so that we can help make that, imp that final impression on them to help them remember some of those things that, that we, we've tried to teach them. Any, any uh, questions, Amy, that you have about... Um, where this lesson or, or these uh, concepts are going or any questions that you've heard from teachers that we might could address? I think you, you did a great job of covering it. This definitely comes up a lot, uh, not only just because we are the only state to have it as an actual standard. There is one other state that has it kind of, it's discussed lightly um, involved in their personal financial literacy um, uh, topics, but not not the way that we cover it. And I think, um, as uh, as you said, Dr. Sasser, I think it's really great that, that we do have this um, in our personal finance standards and how important it is that, um, that we put it in. It's it's just part of your budget. And I think we do have a lot of teachers that get anxious about teaching it um, because they're not really sure where to go with it. But it's really pretty simple, as you've been, um, been saying is that it's really just about teaching risk versus reward and that it's something that if you choose to do that, that you put it in your budget and it's just a part of your entertainment expenses. So 
Um, well, and you know, I, I, I think in some ways I'm real proud that we haven't just hidden this. We just hit it head on. Uh, and I think other states may, you know, be trying to dance around it uh, because they don't want to look at it as really being a problem. Uh, but, you know, it's not just teens in Oklahoma or it's not just people in Oklahoma that that uh, are dealing with these issues. I mean, and as gambling becomes more and more available online and again, the Supreme Court rules that gambling is legal uh, and it opens it up more and more to, you know, people of all ages, um, not just even in the U.S., but also around the world, you know, maybe they're sitting back, you know, hoping that people won't, uh, whereas we're recognizing uh, that it exists and trying to figure out ways that we can tackle it uh, and help provide some advice, one, for teachers to help students, but even more importantly, for students to learn and, and have some knowledge base uh, and some understanding about what gambling really is, the potential issues that uh, exist with it, uh, but even more importantly, the potential impact on themselves. Uh, and that's where, you know, when you start to personalize it, then, then it starts to make a difference in people's lives. Absolutely. Yes. So bottom line to everybody watching, we are not teaching how to gamble. We're not <laughs> teaching on how to play all the games. We are we are teaching risk versus reward and putting that into your budget. And that is, um, I know the State Department gets calls. We get calls at this um, Oklahoma Council on Economic Education about this standard or what are we doing with this standard? Why is it there? And, and, um, and that's why it's there. It's because it's important. It's um, prevalent in our state. And so let's talk about it. And it's about risk versus reward putting in your budget. So, so yeah, yeah and, not, and let's give people the tools for how to deal with it. Uh, and, you know, which again is what we do budget it, move on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Very good. There's your final words budget it, budget yeah. it, and move <laughs> on. So, very good. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Dr. Sasser, for sharing with us your wisdom and expertise in, um, in this standard. And it was really great to visit with you, especially um, about the, the origins of how this got into our personal finance standards. So, um, And for our teachers, um, as you get to teach this, or if you run across um, things that you're not sure how to handle or questions that you get from parents, we're here to help you with the um, Oklahoma Council on Economic Education, as well as the State Department of Education. So if you you have any more questions or concerns or need more resources we're here to help all right well thank you so much uh -huh. thank you amy